actually. We are so excited. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're really thankful that, that uh, people are interested in hearing about this. Um, I'm Bill Gutha. I'm with uh, I want a shower. I'm Wong. I'm shower from uh, Princeton University Library. And we work together to do geographic information system support. But we just wanted to sort of expand the picture a little bit and talk about some of the things that are happening uh, in Congress that we just want to make you aware of. Uh, these are two different bills, one sponsored in the House, the other in the Senate, to uh, limit data collection and use. Um, that these are the links to, to those sites. Um, this one is sponsored by Mr. Gosar of, of Arizona. This is Mr. Lee of Utah, and Marco Rubio of Florida are sponsoring this bill, uh, which they call the Local Zoning Decisions Protection Act of 2017. Now, if you're from New Jersey, you know about the Mount Laurel decision. The Mount Laurel decision uh, required that townships had to provide some kind of affordable housing. And what this is is a response to that kind of a threat, I think, uh, on their part, saying local zoning decisions uh, should be In other words, you could all call, also call this the uh, Eliminating Unwanted Peoples Act of 2017. So we can't provide any. Thing. The, what's impressive about this uh, this uh, proposed bill is that it seeks to um, use no federal funds, require no federal funds can be used to design, build, maintain, utilize, or provide access to federal databases of geospatial information on community racial disparities, disparities in access to affordable housing. So what that would mean, it would pretty much shut down most of what the Census Bureau does. It would pretty much eliminate information that is collected and gives you this kind of a graph. It gives you some idea of what is the uh, real median household income by race and Hispanic origin to see just the disparity based on race. So this would be, become no longer this kind of data no longer be collected and it could be shared. So um, this is why you know we're very concerned about it and. Um, we're very concerned about it for a number of reasons. One is that census data are simply to collect who shall vote, but it also tracks federal spending needs, determines shortfalls of services, measures the performance of federal programs. So it really drives smart government. It makes things informative to, to the, all citizens. And uh, it's collected in a variety of contexts at uh, large and small areas. It, uh, Generally goes down to the uh, census tract. There's census tracts within each county, and within each county, there's counties within each each uh, state. And then, so then there's block groups found within each tract, and then there's blocks found within each block group. So you can get some data down to the block level. You get other data to the block group level. We'll look at today at, at data mostly at the block group level. And this is where the level at which you get a lot of interesting information. So the census collects this data. For, for these smaller areas of the U.S., and it can be incorporated in the geographic information systems, and then you can share the results of these interactively, and we'll show you a few examples of the data that's available online right now. Um, you may be familiar with the census. The census is required by the Constitution to, to its account, and uh, it, until recently, there was both a short form and a long form long form collected the more interesting information about the economic and about racial characteristics and uh, it was at one time collected in a scale of one to six households so the sample rate was pretty good um, after the 2000 census they switched to the uh, american community survey which is the acs here and that is uh, released at broad geographic levels every year but it gets down to the block group level every five years so this survey only gets one in 40 households. So the margin of error in some cases is larger than whatever the trend is. So it is challenging, but it's a very important data set. And you'll see some of the ways in which people are using it. So I don't know if you're familiar, have you used geographic information systems? I know a few people. <laughs> um, I just want to say a little bit about that, that um, geographic information systems can do all of these different types of analyses and support to production, cartography, and the rest of it. And Wang Yan and I worked closely together to make those kind of tools available to you in the university. You can talk to us after we're glad to give you some idea about what we do. But you'll see in a little bit some of the ways in which geographic information is used. So what we've been 
talk about is basically we will concentrate on the bill, uh, the threat of the bill to a society and research communities. Because if the bill is passed, it's likely that many of the racial related data set or income related data set will disappear through the federal funding. And so what we're talking about is geographic information uh, data set. So we wanted to describe to you what geographic information or geographic data is to give you the idea. So the geographic data, in order to understand, you get a lot of data sets, right? You get a lot of data sets, the tabular data sets you have, you have played with the statistics and all. The difference between that data set and geographic data set is that the geographic data does have to have some sort of geometries or some sort of geography that has a coordinate system. And it knows exactly where that place is located. That is, that gives you the prescription to do or to solve the problem exactly at the same places. But that, if, if the federal doesn't allow you to collect the data at that level, that means you will be blind. You won't be able to do that sort of stuff. So the geospatial data consists of any geography, boundary, or shape of the geometry or pixel that is a coordinate system. And not only that, that coordinate system or the geometry will have attributes tied to that. So then it becomes a really powerful way to do a query by which you can say, who is living there? What sort of income? All kinds of complex questions could be asked. So that's the one thing may disappear, um, uh, especially related to the income or racial characteristic. So just to give you geospatial data generally about talking about it, geographic data or the geospatial data are usually saved in a two different file format or broad data models. One we call it vector data models, through which if you're trying to understand this is the reality, reality could be captured in uh, lines or areas or points. But that type of the data format is called what we call it as vector data. And the reality could be captured through a uh, pixel-based information. So for example, example here is the land use or elevations. All of those are called a raster-based uh, data models. Now, beside these two, the census and other data sets, for example, we have given some example of you might have collected latitude and longitude data set. That gives you just a simple textual data. But that could be converted into geospatial data easily. We will show you the example. Same is the case with addresses. That could be converted into geospatial data. The census collected a lot of data, which is reported lowest as a block level. But then more interesting data are uh, released at the block group level or census tract and others. All of those could be tied to geospatial data, and then the data will become a more interesting data set. So those are the things that are in danger. Just to give you the example of other things, what we can do. This is a police, um, what do you call, stop and frisk data set released by the uh, New York City. So this is all data that we have that gives you latitude and longitude, so you can plot them. But in order to see some sort of pattern here, what we have to do is we can run through a GIS software and through which we can find a hotspot, concentration of them. So through that concentration, now if you wanted to find out what is happening in different New York City related to the race, we could actually put this race data set. That is uh, what you could release by census department, right, at the block group level. So this data itself is interesting, but how to relate to each other, it's much more interesting. So if you wanted to figure out, this is what you see, that how many white people are actually located in a hotspot of please stop and frisk area. So that many. The same thing you can apply to the African American community. This is the distribution. And then when you plot them together, around that, um, number of African Americans are located in the hotspot area, meaning the, the police stop and frisk area. The same thing applies to Hispanic. If you're trying to look through, this is what you see, right? And so, by which you should be able to figure out the relationship between any sort of a geographic data with demographic. And if the demographic part is not reported or captured in store, you cannot do a really interesting racial disparities type of analysis and research at all. So that's the danger that we have and we like to share with you. Um, this is just give you the general theme. As you can see, the total population, 
based on the 2010 census, how many white populations are there in New York City, how many black, how many Hispanic, but how many of them are in police stop and frisk area. So that's what you can see easily looking through our GIS uh, software, and you can find those things. Okay. Just as another example of this, this is data we were just looking at the active contaminated sites are sites identified by the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection the sites that they're controlling. So I'm not sure the relative risk of some of these sites, but you can see that um, they're scattered throughout the state. Pinelands here, luckily, does not have as many as some. Um, so there's about 9,324 here. And if we look at the areas identified as where black populations are predominant, the black population hotspots, they have 22%. Of all the um, of all the sites, Hispanics have 26 percent, Asians have 12 percent. So there is a greater number of contaminated sites in areas where these communities live, and it's that kind of analysis that we need to be able to do. Just looking at, at Hispanic, you can see that, that there's some overlap in terms of, of areas. Um, if you look at the Asian population, you'll see that it is more spread out. It actually has a smaller percentage, but it's a pretty significant one. So this is the kind of thing that you, that you can look at um, using data that's collected at a variety of levels. This is from some of the data from, from the state of New Jersey, but all of the population data and demographic data is the census. So again, this is just looking at median income, and looking at median income and the distances to uh, public housing authorities, locations of public housing authorities relative to them, and um, just sort of where they're located, and uh, comparing that to, to median income. You can see there's there's quite a bit of economic disparity throughout the state in some areas where uh, people are definitely not represented. This is exactly the kind of thing that that bill is trying to. Is, is trying to reinforce, not, not, not remove. So let me just um, open, shall I, shall I do that over here? Okay. So, so what we have here is, is just, uh, this is ArcGIS ArcMap, just to give you an idea of what the software does. Um, these are different data layers on the left, and you can turn them on and off by just clicking on them. And you can control them just by right clicking on them and saying zoom to layer here. So this is the example from the census of a median household income. And so you can see there's this band through here of wealthy areas. I'll zoom into a smaller section. And what I did, one of the things I did is I was interested in seeing how many sites are there in each of these census block groups. You may remember that image of, of how the block groups were part of the census tracts. And so this is sort of the smallest geography, census geography that gets interesting in terms of this. So these are the uh, locations of block groups. I'm sorry, the number of sites per, per block group. You can see there's there's a large area here, and then a large number of sites. Actually, there's 55 hazardous waste sites in that particular spot. Um, and so you can also see how some of this relates visually to, to uh, things like uh, household income. You can also load uh, other data in here about uh, the hotspots in terms of ethnicity. So, so there's different things. You can see, for example, here that there's both the Hispanic and black hotspot here. So this gives you some idea of how you can explore this using the GIS. The um, other thing I just wanted to mention real quickly is data from the uh, Office of Environmental Justice in EPA. Um, they have, well, I'll show you in a second, there's a site called the EJ screen, which will allow you to, you don't need to load software or anything like that. You can actually, online using the browser, see a lot of really interesting information about economic disparity. I just read that uh, Scott Pruitt, the new head of the uh, EPA, plans to dismantle the Office of Environmental Justice. So I'm not sure how long this site will be up. All the data is available. But we've downloaded it. Uh, they've actually made the, the application itself downloadable. So hopefully it's something that people will still be able to hold on to, whether it's going to be updated, whether it's going to be continued, I, uh, I can't say. Let me just turn off some of these other data layers here. And one of the data sets I had is draft traffic proximity, which is I, I got from the um, from the uh, 
DJ screen data set. So you need some idea of, you know, just in terms of help, help risk to keep persons from access uh, from proximity to car fumes. Um, these particulate matter is another example here where, uh, especially with, with heavy trucks moving in and out of the state, uh, urban communities are really faced with a lot of problems in that. Uh, another data set that EG Screen has is the percent housing built before 1960. This is used as a surrogate for uh, the possibility of lead exposure, since lead-based paint might be found in houses built before 1960. That's about as close as we can get to, you know, flagging or, or anticipating whether children are at risk to, from home residential based lead based um, um, And again, this data set, uh, housing built before 1960, is only available to the census. So in terms of you know, getting children out of risky areas, this, this is very powerful stuff to have. And again, you can then see you know, what sorts of racial communities as well as economic communities are found. Oh, uh, relative to, to these environmental risks. Oops. So let me just um, open a browser here. This is the site. Uh, if you go to uh, EPA Gov and then just do slash on EJ screen, it's um, this is the uh, environmental justice screening mapping tool. If you just click on this, it has a variety of data sets that you can use to to explore. I'll just go to, um, let me just go to Trenton. So it'll give us a, a, a basic map here. But what's neat is that it's got all kinds of other data sets. You can go here to EJ Screen Maps, and it'll give you demographic indicators as well as environmental ones. So I can load the diesel uh, particulate matter. I can look into a traffic pr proximity. Um, hazardous waste, uh, ozone. This is particulate matter, 2.5 microns. So I'll just, uh, let's see, what would be a good one? I'll do the lead paint indicator. And so this will just be loaded and added to the map as, as, a, uh, as an example here. So you can, you can see the uh, percentile. This is relative to the national percentile what sections of prison are likely to have a lead-based paint and put those children at risk. So if you wanted to uh, also just get some information specific to an area, you can generate a report here. And I can just report on a no geography. I'll just click on a block group. This block group happens to right, be right near US-1 in the train tracks. And I'll just say submit. And you can get a printable report. Or you, I'll, I'll just get that for the moment. I think it'll work. It should give me a, a PDF file. Let's see. So this gives us very quickly some idea of, of, of what relative risk this community is under. So this is, to me, this is a terrific site. This is really powerful, good stuff. If you're interested in environmental justice issues, this would be really a, a good site to look at. And you know, please try to encourage your, your Congress people to, to keep it alive because this is the kind of information that, that people need to have. And uh, what we were trying to do is, in, in fact, the, the reason we were doing presentation is to just to show you the possibilities. And those possibilities may disappear if the bill is passed. And if you have a friend or if you're from any of those uh, area that is, say, from Utah or Arizona or from Florida, um, you can tell them to talk about this bill and uh, uh, this, uh, so that we can actually encourage people to, uh, you know, um, not to vote for this, uh, uh, these, uh, uh, the, what you call bills. So what I'm going to show you is some of the possibilities that we have talked about, the data which may not look like a geographic data, but it's an Excel file, and how we can convert them into a geographic data and thereby, then you can overlay and do a complex analysis. So that's what we wanted to show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a simple um, data set that we may have it. So the data could be as simple as, uh, hopefully I have examples of there. Um, so for example, we have hospital data set in New Jersey. These are different hospital data. Um, 
Um, however, it's just simple Excel. But what they have is they have a location information. It gives you lat long. Um, now what you can do is with that lat long, we give a coordinate system to that, and thereby it will be converted into uh, geographic data. So I wanted to show you the simple process so that you can see the possibilities. So we have New Jersey data and simple New Jersey data. Just wanted to give you a quick look. And I will turn off some of the layers so that you can see it easily. Just give you these are all municipality boundaries. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the uh, simple hospital data set that I have. So CSV data that we have here, and that is a simple Excel spreadsheet, or what do you call CSV file, um, simple like that, it comes up like this, this way. And so now this data we could, if we give a portrait system to this, then we will know exactly where these hospitals are located in reference to New Jersey. So the simple process will be, we could tell the uh, software how these data were collected and what sort of earth model they have used to give a coordinate system. So this map has this coordinate system, which is very peculiar or very, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, common to a New Jersey. And but this data that we have, latitude and longitude, is not collected using these coordinate systems. So we have to change that coordinate system. And I'm going to change it, simple coordinate systems. And so I'm going to give a very common coordinate system, which is usually used for GPS um, uh, data collection. And so I'm going to give this coordinate system and then tell the software. So it just gives you not a location. Once you have this location, then you can do a complex, uh, what do you call, analysis about how many people are living nearby this hospital. And what sort of demographic characteristic what sort of social economic characteristic really looks like. So you can do a complex analysis like this. So this is the one example that we want to show you. Simple table can be converted into geographic data, and then you, do, you can do a complex analysis. Another example that I wanted to show you is, for example, what we have here is we have a median household income. Um, so I'm going to make this easier to view because right now, of the boundary of all the, uh, what do you call, block groups, it's hiding many of the um, variations. So you see, uh, this gives you the, the demographic um, information, uh, sorry, demographic in the sense, this is the median household income. So suppose if I wanted to attach another uh, demographic information that I can get it from a census data set. Um, that is from <coughs> this Excel spreadsheet, simple Excel spreadsheet that gives you a 2016 uh, median household income um, by block group and by race. And what they have is this one, FIPS code. FIPS code is a federal information processing standard which is unique to individual block. And using this, we can tie to the boundary of census and by which then all of these data set could be integrated into a geography and then you can do a complex analysis. So the simple data like this Excel spreadsheet that we have, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this Excel spreadsheet data, which is here, Excel spreadsheet, and this data that I'm brought it here, and if I open, this is the same data set that we are using. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to join this data set. Hopefully this will open. Yep, this is a simple one. And, and then I'm going to tie this data to one of the uh, data set. Actually, I do have another, um, which is block group, New Jersey block group. This is the New Jersey block group. Um, 
what we have is New Jersey Block Group does have a 2010 related um, uh, median household income. Now I wanted to find out and compare them or to uh, bring a 2016 median household income. So what I'm going to do is, it's a very simple and easy way to do it, but it's really powerful. So I'm going to tell the software, the FIPS code, which is the Federal Information uh, Processing Standard data set, and I'm telling to join it using the same um, unique identifier. And then once you join these two data set, then what will happen is the Excel table will project um, let's see, hopefully this will work. Live presentation sometimes. Um, okay, there you go. So now what you have is you have not only a 2010, but these are all from 2016. So by which now what we can do is we can do the same sort of, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, representation um, easily. So we have a median household income um, data set by block group by 2000 census, uh, what do you call 2000 uh, census data set that is collected through what we call American Community Survey and hopefully this will work. And then we should be able to not only display them but also we can do a complex analysis like that. So these are the ones. Um, so we can dip into a six classifications and the same thing I just wanted to make sure that it will be easy to display them. And then in reference to that one, the hospitals are, oops, still, thing. the hospital data is here. And we can put a lot of other data set, like um, road network, hospital um, is there, police station, all kinds of stuff. And then we can do a complex analysis with that, with other, uh, the socioeconomic data sets. So <coughs> what we fear is that the if the bill the two, uh, the, uh, what do you call, Congress men are sponsoring, if somehow they are passed, most likely we may not be able to do these sort of complex analysis. And therefore, we wanted to give you a simple or powerful examples of possibilities. Okay, so these are some of the things that we wanted to share. And if you wanted to uh, look at other data set that you can actually download, these are some of the sites. That Princeton University Library do have a lot of census data um, that you can download them as a simple table, but also you can download them together with the geography. And um, then also you have other census data set that is tied to the, uh, what do you call, housing uh, data set. So you can find, for example, Social Explorer will give you uh, demographic data right from 1790 onward till now. And the uh, simply map will allow you to look at uh, not only the demographic uh, data itself, but also with the geography, you can look at that one. Uh, the PrincetonPolicyMap.com, that will allow you to look at a lot of housing related data set. You can download them. So we wanted to give you some of the possible options. Um, um, the housing uh, uh, data set is a really interesting data set. It will give you about the affordability index. Um, and the census obviously have tons and tons of not only a table data set, but also different kinds of census geography, right from school district to uh, congressional boundaries and so on and so forth. If you overlay congressional boundary with the demographic, you will see uh, interesting, interesting things, which I guess if the bill is passed, we may not be able to do these sort of interesting complex analysis. So um, that's where we have a presentation. And uh, if you have any questions, um, Bill and I can answer. Do you have any questions? Uh, or, yes. I was just going to make a comment as a librarian who works with the demographic and data, how crucial this is. Um, but for students that are here who, who might have gotten kind of interested, there are people within the library as well as Mangal and Bill who can help you figure out what would be a good data set to use. Because it is overwhelming. 
Um, and so, um, if you just contact Wang Gong, he can't help you. He would refer you to other people who could. But it's an amazing resource, and with, let's not wait till it goes away before <laughs> we start missing it. Thanks. Thanks for mm -hmm. thanks for coming. Yes. What's what's the rationale for the bill? I think it's it's mostly to uh, uh, that's why we call it willful ignorance. They they really want to restrict the amount of information that's available about about communities that are uh, less fortunate, and they want to ensure that uh, local zoning boards can continue to restrict uh, the avail availability of housing. Did the government say that? Because usually they have like a good reason. Yeah, but they they pretend there's a good reason. Well, they call it the Local Zoning Protection Act. It's protecting the ability of local zoning boards to to, 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 to make their discriminate. Decision. Yeah, basically. Technically, like what it's trying to do is, it's trying to give a power to the local zoning people to not allow certain people to come in. Low income and housing cannot be built because they will say, we have a power not to not to do this. One. So because of this, you can see the disparity of race. Data should not be uh, uh, built, compiled if the federal uh, dollars are spent. So which means you cannot really display them the disparity of race in that area, right? If the bill is passed. So is the affordable housing, which is basically based on the income. And that data also cannot be really collected if the federal funds are used. So that's the danger. I mean, they may not have seen these possibilities, but in the surface it looks like, okay, they're trying to protect the local government. But in, in the bigger uh, picture, if you're trying to look at what sort of impact it'll have on a society, and what sort of impact it'll have on a community, and the research community who cannot really do this sort of research easily. So that's what we think, sure. Yeah, uh, if I just speculate, I hadn't heard about this before today. Uh, I would think that their, ju their cited justification would be something like, uh, we shouldn't be using federal funds for this, you know, local governments should be given the discretionary power to decide whether they need to collect this data and whether that would be relevant, right? Uh, so I don't know if maybe we can pressure them to say, yeah, at least have like a package deal, you know, where if they really want to put forward the limitation on federal funds that they also step up their efforts for local uh, data collection. I think it's all so basically, the census is funded by federal government, census data collection. And one of the primary data that collect, which is that every 10 year, um, they collect um, counting, not only counts the population, but also they collect the race related data set. So it's a federal funded. So if this bill passed, I don't know what sort of impact it will have, it, right? We don't know. And the American Community Survey, which is done every year, um, collects a lot of housing related data set, not only this, a lot of income related data sets. So if you're talking about affordability, housing, that means it can be tied to income and it can be tied to house ownership, right? Those data cannot be collected, right? So th those are the things that may have a big impact, but uh, they are not looking at that picture. I think they may not have understood these possibilities. Are there any private organizations collecting similar kind of, of data at the national mm -hmm. level? They may be doing a survey. Um, they may be doing a survey, um, but not really like the census does. Um, the extensive collections that, that they have to, they do it. Um, uh, you know, I doubt they, they are one particular commercial company who does these sort of collections. Um, I'm not aware of. I, I just read about a group that was doing something looking at Google Street View and identifying cars and using that as a surrogate for what census data would say. So they, they said, what kind of cars are located in the neighborhood? And then they compared that to some of the known census data and then they tried to predict for half of the data whether, okay, I've got the same cars, do I have the same type of demographic characteristics? And they were very thrilled that they did. So as long as we're all driving cars, I guess they can figure out our census data. It's sort of an odd way to do it. Um, I think you know, direct collection of data across the United States makes a lot more sense than 
Yeah, that's true. I mean, there are a lot of surrogate ways of collecting that you can analyze, but it will be a complex way to actually uh, extract the information to do, right? Although it's possible, but it's very difficult to do it. And I think the uh, the census data that they, the government collects is freely available to the public, anybody. So there is no discrimination whether you have a lot of money um, or you don't have any money. Um, if you have access to a computer, you could just download all of those things and you can do the analysis if you know how to do the analysis, right? Whereas if the commercial companies are collecting, obviously you depend on the commercial people and you really don't know when they will be, go out of the business, right? And whether they will keep those data all, over time, you really don't know. So therefore you cannot do a longitudinal studies at all, right? So those are the issues that we have to figure out as a society, as a citizen. back to <clears throat> the NRA's victory in limiting the ability to collect and analyze uh, gun violence. Um, it's basically parallel to that. And climate change, even though we have a bunch of data showing something about climate change, we will still discredit it. Any other? Well, we can we can give it to volunteers here, and sure you can. And also at the same time, and you know, the Princeton um, University do have a lot of resources like us. We are willing to help you. We are willing to make you successful in your research. And feel free to contact us, and you know, we are here to help you um, to do any kinds of analysis um, in uh, the in the GIS environment. So it's great. Yeah, especially in the DSS as well. Sure. And our attempts currently being made to sort of sort of sort of are people able to copy and record this as much data as they can before, like if they can find any sort of data that would be useful to them to be able to analyze the data. Yeah, and I think the 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 uh, copy them at this stage, right? But then if the bill like this pass, future is the issue. Um, and so that's a danger. There are a lot of data sets like this. Yeah, they, they actually have it here on the page down on yeah. the UK screen. Yeah. And they've done set. a nice job of wrapping it. They've even made it possible to download the entire page itself. Well, yeah. well from, from, uh, from, what I'm, from, from what I understand, understand here, the bill uh, only, only the bill would only restrict to restrict the access. It wouldn't restrict owning the data. Um, it's a it's uh, the bill says this. Let's yeah, try to give, um, give you the interesting. To design, build, maintain, utilize, or provide access. So federal fund. It says no federal fund may be used to design anything. Designing, building, maintaining and utilized and provide access to federal database of federal data is census data, uh, geospatial information which has, I said, described you, which has the boundary files and the data tied to them together. And so beside this on community racial disparity, anything to do with the race, and then also disparity in access to the affordable housing. Affordable housing is basically calculated based on income and ownership of properties. So those data are not allowed <coughs> to be maintained according to this bill. <coughs> so I don't know whether this will pass or not, but this is potential. Sure. I know that the credits also stopped collecting census data on race. Do you know anything about whether that's prevented new policies from being developed in the Say it again? I, I didn't hear you, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, France 
started to prevent the census data collection on racial disparities. Front? Yeah, I don't know. If, I, I don't know if there's been any comparison uh, between the U.S. and France about direct collection. Well, France stopped collecting race data after World War II. It's not recent. <laughs> um, it's been for decades, and it definitely when it was one when it was a more homogeneous society, it maybe didn't matter so much, but now in a, as the world is changing and France is changing, it will have probably more policy. Yeah, I, I'm not very sure about your question, but certainly she answered you that way. But also in the United States, interesting part is election is basically based on demographic and racial characteristic. Gerrymandering is the one which is done to write any any politician want to capture and so those type the demographic data are actually released at a block level which is really small <coughs> geography and through that they can curb all the boundaries around and so that kind of stuff in the one sense they cannot do it right they won't have access to these sort of stuff so what's any the current person? status of the two uh, bills where are they and what's the process of um, here. They're reported to committee. I don't know if they're going to hold hearings. Um, apparently, I think this was released at the last session as well, uh, in you know, 2014, and it didn't go anywhere. And we're hoping that that's what happens this time as well. Yeah. But given our political circumstances, we just don't. And uh, again, you know, it's like my finding that the Office of Environmental Justice is going to be disbanded. It, it, there's going to be a lot of little places where they're going to just start pulling it out and, and making data not no longer available or, or making programs just, just not responsive. Because one of the clever things they can do is not change the regulations, but simply remove the, 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 the staff to, to make the data available. In this, uh, what do you call, House bill, I think they have around 19 or so representatives actually supporting this bill. Um, Whereas in the Senate part, there's only one sponsor. Um, uh, so we don't know where where this bill will go. But in, in the larger context, there are uh, professional organizations uh, in the United States who have written a letter to both um, uh, the, what do you call, the congressman and Senate, I mean the senator as well as the congressman. And uh, let's see, many professional organizations have written um, saying that the impact it will have. Uh, hopefully they will. Uh, understand those uh, issues and hopefully they will not really do anything, but we don't know at this stage. And these are the links for... Right, these are the long... I mean, if you type in a Google type House Bill um, 4A2 and Senate Bill 103, you should be able to find that one and then read through. Actually, the main part of this, the bill, um, is this part, Section 3 is the one, uh, which seems to be something which concerns uh, but others are fairly generic. Uh, we, we may not, you may not be able to read through. But when we when we saw this one, they said, "Wow, this will have a really big impact." I'm curious, are, are there any businesses that rely on this data, this collection of data for profit making? Because uh, I think if you can I mean, tie one, that in, that one thing we I, I wanted to say is that I'm involved with the GIS from '90s. Yeah. Okay. And what we have seen, the release of government census data and geography has have mushroomed the GIS industry. It's a billion dollar industry, and it wasn't there before. So the, it's a free release of government data set. Through this, they can do a, a lot of uh, what do you call uh, interesting data generations mm -hmm. and analysis. And in between, like they can develop a lot of other software which can harness those data set those business are just coming up like anything. It seems like if you could tie the businesses into a potential for their future being impacted by the passage of that bill, you could be sure. an ally on your side. Yeah, I mean, that's what uh, many organizations are trying to do right now. Yeah, actually, um, all marketing companies are um, yeah. using census data for the big data analysis. Very, um, particular insurance companies. Yeah, that seems to me like... But any yeah. consumer marketing There is a lot of implications. I mean, they may not really thought about this issue, but the, the 
the, uh, the census data is used all over the world by different businesses. And some you may not have realized, but they, they use them uh, for, for generating different uh, businesses. All right, I think if you have any questions, we are willing to answer. But uh, if not, thank you very much for coming. Thank you.